Hi, now we are in example number one of section 16.8. Here we will learn how to calculate the velocity uh, of a body that moves with a relative velocity and acceleration from another body. So we will use the whole equations of velocity and acceleration. So we here in this problem we have a rod that at the instant shown is moving with an angular velocity of 3 radians per second and an, an, an angular acceleration of 2 radians per second squared. And is at 60 degrees from the horizontal and there is a coil moving along the rod with a, a relative velocity of 2 meters per second and a relative acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. So and we are asked to find the velocity of the coil C and the acceleration of the coil C at that instant, and we are, they want us to make the, the point which one is the Coriolis acceleration. So, first of all, we have to set up our coordinate system. As you see, there is different ways to set up the coordinate system. So I can set up a, an absolute x, y coordinate system that is attached to Earth, or is inertial, so it's absolute. And then we can set up another coordinate system attached to our body. And I'm going to tilt that uh, system and attach to the body. And I'm going to tilt it because all the relative velocity and the acceleration and the distance is given in that direction. So I'm going to call it X, I can call it X, uh, capital X and capital Y, so to make a difference between the other one that I just named. So I will use that system, which is relative uh, and is moving with the rod to be able to calculate the acceleration and the velocity. So let's start. So the solution of this problem will be, first, let's start with the velocity. And for that, I'm going to be using that system that I just named x and y, capital Y, x, and I'm going to attach it to the rod. And the velocity c, so you know the, the equation for the velocity, that uh, angular velocity cross the distance c respect to o, where is the origin of the, of the uh, coordinate system, plus the relative velocity from c to o. Then the velocity of O is zero because this is a fixed point. So this is the instant center of rotation of our rod. And actually, it's not instant because since we have a pin, we can say that just is the uh, center of rotation of the rod. So this is zero. And then we have our angular velocity for that instant is 3 in negative k cross our distance, and I said that I'm going to use this tilted coordinate system. So this is 0 0.2 in i plus the, ve the uh, relative velocity. And the relative velocity will be 2 also in i. So finally, very easy, my velocity, absolute velocity of c will be 3 times 0 0.2, 0 0.6 k times i, that's positive j, and with that negative, it's negative j plus 2 i. And that's in meters per second. So that's my velocity. So for the acceleration, For acceleration, we do exactly the same. We use our system that is attached to the rod. And we do acceleration of C is equals to acceleration of O plus angular acceleration across the distance plus. Actually, it's o omega cross omega cross distance 
but you, as you know, for uh, two dimension, this become an easy term, which is negative angular velocity squared times the distance, but I will write it like that to do it general. Then we have the term that you know that this is the Coriolis duration, angular velocity cross the relative velocity C respect to O plus relative acceleration C respect to O. So that's our whole equation for the acceleration. Since they want us to calculate the Coriolis acceleration, here we are going to take this term first and make a uh, calculation. So the Coriolis acceleration is equals to two times the angular velocity, which is given negative three k cross the relative velocity from the coil in the direction shown to in I, our Coriolis acceleration is 12, let's 12, and in which direction is K times A is J in negative J, uh, I mean meter per second. So if we, let me write it here, the acceleration of Coriolis, is 12, negative 12 j meter per second squared. We can draw that acceleration to make, to understand it. And that acceleration will be in negative j. So let me draw it here. So it will be acceleration of Coriolis. This is an interesting phenomenon because we have a, an angular velocity in k direction. We have a relative velocity in i, and we have an acceleration in j. So having two velocities in perpendicular direction to each other in k and i, a third or an acceleration in perpendicular to two, those two uh, directions appear and is called Coriolis acceleration. So it's very interesting that new acceleration that we get and it's perpendicular to the, to the angular velocity and perpendicular to the relative velocity. So now we calculate the rest. As we did in the velocity, this acceleration is zero. And then we get that the, our total acceleration, absolute acceleration of that coil will be alpha, which is also given, negative 2k cross the distance, which is 0 0.2 in I, and as I say, these terms because become an easier term for two dimension, which is omega squared, and omega is given negative three squared times the distance, which is 0 0.2 in I. I already calculated the Coriolis acceleration, so I'm going to write the results, minus 2, 12 in J plus the relative acceleration, which is given, which is 3 in I. So here we multiply our all the terms, and we get our acceleration is 0 0.4 k times I is j again, minus here we have 9 plus 0.2 is 1.8, negative because of that negative in I minus 12J plus 3I. So at the end, salt is equals to 1.2I negative 12.4J meters over second squared. So as you see, we were able to calculate the absolute velocity and the absolute acceleration of Coyer C having for one instance. It's very important to understand. This is like a picture of that instant where we are given the velocity and the acceleration and the position. If we want to find the whole motion, that's, uh, we will have to do a generic uh, equation. But for that picture, we were able to calculate the absolute velocity and the absolute acceleration. 
You can also see the solution in the PowerPoint presentation.